One of the newest tools in Office 365 is something called Forms. It was released this past spring, and what you can do with Forms is create either online assessment or online polls. And it was designed specifically with teachers in mind. So everybody who has an Office 365 education account will have this tile. After logging into Office 365, if you don't see the tile on your main screen, come up to the upper left and click on this tool and scroll down and look for it here or you should have an option that says view all apps at the very bottom and then you'll be able to find this forms tool. So when you click on forms, what it's going to look like is pretty simple. This is something that's still in its infancy and that Microsoft is developing, but it works really, really well. And what you're going to do to create a form is come over to where it says new. These are other forms that I've created already. And you click new and you get a very simple layout. Over here where it says untitled form, this is where you're going to name your assessment or your poll. So all you got to do is click inside it and you will get a text box. And below where it says enter a description, this is where you could put directions that you normally might put on a paper test. You also have the ability now, this is fairly recent to insert images as part of your form and you'll be able to do that with each of your questions as well. Um, we'll show you that more as we start to develop questions. So you fill out your description here and it's not required you don't have to put one in here and then you can start building your assessment or your poll. So when you click add a question you get five different choices. You have a choice option, a quiz option, text, rating, or date. A choice question is something that doesn't have a pre-selected correct answer. For instance, you are doing some kind of polling and you just want to get the student's opinion. So you put in a question and you give a number of different choices and in the end, the responses will show up in a graph format so you can see what is the most popular choice. A quiz question is something that you would use in a quiz format, meaning when you create a quiz question, you pre-select the correct choice which means forms is going to automatically grade it for you. A text question means the students would be filling out a short answer or a long answer and it's something that's not automatically graded. You would have to grade it individually. A rating is just a, as it sounds a rating type of question where you are asking the students to rate something on a scale of 1 to 10 or by stars. And then a date is just another type of question where the students would put in a date. So the most popular option that most teachers are going to choose is the quiz question. So a quiz question looks like this. You select quiz and you have an answer, a box where you would put in your question. And then you have your answer options. You can, it starts out with two options, but you can add as many choices as you want. And you're going to see to the right of each one of your choices, there is an option to select the correct answer. By default, you will see that the first choice is picked as the correct answer. So you will change that based on whichever one is your correct choice. So my answer choices are in. I'm going to select the correct choice. And you can see down here you have a few other options. One option that you are going to have to click that is not set as the default is to make a question required. If this is not clicked over here to on, that means the students could potentially skip this question and submit all of their answers without actually answering everything and lose points. So it is a good idea to go back and make sure that you hit required on each one of your questions. You can also assign point value. So if you know this is going to be um, a 10 question quiz and you want to make each one 10 points, you can put that in here. If you're not sure how many questions there are going to be, you can always come back and assign the point value later. And over here, this is just allowing multiple correct answers. You do also have the ability, by clicking on this ellipsis over here, to shuffle the answer choices, meaning if they are taking this in class and you don't want each student to have these choices in the same order as the person sitting next to them, you can click on that as well. One of the new features that they just added to this, if you click inside the area where you typed your question, you can now insert an image and they allow you to pick this image from a variety of different places. You can actually search online through Bing images, sort of like Google images, and you can look for a picture online 
or you can look for something that is in your OneDrive space, which is in Office 365, or you can upload a picture that you have saved to your computer, to your L drive, to your desktop, etc. So you can select your, your picture, click Add, and it will actually put the picture in here. And this is great if you are social studies, you need to put maps or signs, you need to put graphs, etc. So you can insert anything in there. Up here you'll see some arrows. This is going to allow you to change the order of your questions once we have more than one question. So I'm going to insert one more question just so you can see another type of question and the differences. So if I click add a question and this time I do a choice type of question, you can see here it looks very similar to the question type quiz which I did up here. However, I don't have an option to choose a correct choice because this is an opinion, it's a polling question. So there will be no pre-selected correct answer which means this is something that is not graded. So you can see here just like with a quiz question you can add additional options. You're not limited to just two and you can also add an other option meaning if you wanted your students to be able to type in their own choice here you could click that as well. And again, if you want to make sure your students answer this question, you do have to change this over from off to required. And then over here under this ellipsis, you can do, you know, you have the shuffle options here as well, or you can turn this question into a quiz question. Maybe you typed in the wrong one. And the rest of this is pretty, pretty much the same thing. You can add as many questions as you need to just by clicking add a question. You choose your question type. Okay, this is a text one. So you would type in your, your question. This is the area for your answer. By default, it will be a short answer type of question, which means it will limit the students on how many characters they can enter here. If they need to answer in more of a paragraph format, you can switch this over to long answer. And again, you would change this over to required. And that's really about it. In the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how to finish this up and how you can send this to your students and also how you, then you can then view all of the responses from the form that you have created.